It's about time. That's the title of this talk, and that's the point of this talk. Lagba Omer is coming up, so we're all, the whole world is gearing for large, massive demonstration of Jewish pride and unity and the street fairs. We're doing one in here in Cleveland, too. And in New York, there's a massive one, the Great Parade, it's called. If you're, wherever you are, find your local Lagba Omer Parade and join it. And you can join in the prep in any way you can, too. It's about time. Just yesterday, I received a postcard in the mail. A family, husband and wife, joined us for the Seder. They were invited, and they came, and they sent a postcard. Dear Rabbi Chaim and Sarah, thank you for inviting us. It was most beautiful, this, that, and other. The text was large at the start. It started getting smaller at the bottom. It wasn't much. It was really just a thank you note. But in, even in that postcard, there was a difference in the size of the text. When was the last time you got a postcard from someone? When was the last time you sent a postcard? Growing up, I remember, and probably many of you do too, that wherever you went, whether it was in camp, summer camp, or a vacation, or a trip, or whatever, you always sent a postcard home to your parents. So, but that digital communication pretty much replaced that. Today it's easier to send a text or a chat. So much, so much simpler than a postcard. Anyway, the Chafetz Chaim, a great sage in the previous generation, said life is like a postcard. You know how in the postcard you start writing, Dear Mom and Dad, this is the great the great experiences that I've had here and there. And then you start writing big, but then you remember there's more and more to add on, or you go to different places and you want to add to it. And you write smaller and smaller, and then it goes around the margins of the paper over and over again. And they get teenier and teenier. The Chafetz Chaim says, life is like a postcard. We try to fit in everything in the last minute, remembering the important things. But we should really plan ahead and use our time wisely. And this is really a talk about time. Time management. It's not a time management uh, self-help gig, but it's a Torah perspective on time. And it's a repeat of us, mainly a repeat of a talk of Rabbi Shneir Ashkenazi in Hebrew. You can hear the original there. There were there was a great sage recently who made a siyum hashas. He finished the whole Talmud. And he was very excited. He called his friends together. And they asked him at the event, they said, what's so special about this siyum hashas? You, you, fi you finished the Talmud like 30 times. Well, what's unique about this one? He was overly excited. So he said that this one, this whole shas that he learned, the whole Talmud that he learned was only in idle time, in downtime, time that was not dedicated for anything else, time that was waiting in line, commuting, commuting. He made otherwise unproductive time become productive. And that's why it was, it was excited. That's why it was exciting for him. This is really a message for all of us that we have time dedicated for things, but what about the time that goes in between? And we're meant to use that wisely too. The Midrash, Shmuel says, the only true loss in this world is the loss of time. Everything else, most everything else we can get back aside from time. And he gives an example. He says, also, he says that who has time? Everyone. We don't have time. We make time for important things. But what about God giving us the time in our lives? What about that? So he says, who deserves time? It's almost like someone who uses it well deserves more of it. Let me give an example, a parable of a poor person coming to a king and saying that he wants to use, he wants to start a business and he needs money or a king or a wealthy man. 
And the king, or the wealthy man, he uses the parable. The king gives him the money, then the person squanders it and doesn't use it wisely. Then he comes back to him and says, you know, can you give me another chance? Let me, give me some more money. So the king asks him, why should I give it to you? If you squandered the first batch, why won't you squander it again? And here the Midrash says, this is what God tells us about time. If we use it wisely, he'll give us more. Two great sages of the Talmud, Abaya and Rava, they had a genetic, well, one of the most famous great sages, they had a genetic disease. They were cousins, and they had a genetic disease in their family where everyone would die before bar mitzvah age, like 11, 12, 13. At their bar mitzvah, they made it that far. I'm sorry, my mistake. They would die at 18 years old, 17, 18 years old. So at their bar mitzvah, both of them, and they were cousins, they both pledged to God publicly that they will dedicate their lives to Torah and mitzvah. So Rava dedicated his life to God. If you give me more life, I will dedicate it to studying Torah, which he did. And he lived beyond all expectations to 40 years old, ripe old age of 40. Abaya dedicated his life to Torah and mitzvot and good deeds and acts of goodness and kindness. And he lived to a ripe old age of 60 years old. So here we have also people who are figuratively destined not to live that long, but because they dedicated their time to live more, to do it wisely, to use it wisely, they lived longer. The Rebbe asks about Safir Asa Omer. We're counting the Omer every day now. The Rebbe asks about this. Why do we count? When you count something, you want to know a result. If you know what day it is of the Omer, last night was 29, last night was 30, today's going to be 29, today's going to be 30 or 31. If you know how many days, what are you counting for? Long story short, the Rebbe says what we're counting is to, to, to imbue ourselves with the preciousness of time. To know that time is precious. So we're counting the time to, de to, to pronounce the preciousness of time. So the Rebbe says that just like in this world, we have items, physical items, that are meant to be sanctified. Whether you take the, the skin of an animal and make it into a mezuzah, or to fill in, or a Torah, or you take food and you make it kosher, and you make a blessing on it, so too, time is an element that I mentioned that needs to be sanctified too. Says the Rebbe, time, like objects, needs to be sanctified and uplifted. And the Rebbe says that time is a mission. If we have time, time comes with a mission. It doesn't come along, it doesn't come independently. So time is meant to be used for something specific and it's begging to be used well. And the Rebbe was completely against also for the elderly, against retiring. A ran Rabbi Ashkenazi's grandfather it was. He was a banker. And in Israel, the banking industry, they give you at 65, they give you a pension and you go to retire. And he came to the Rebbe at 65 saying, Rebbe, I worked for so many years. Thank God I have a good pension. I don't need to work anymore. I could dedicate my time to studying Torah. What could be better than that? Said the Rebbe, don't retire. Go back to work. Really? And he went back to work. Actually, he went, when he came back home, there was a letter waiting in his mailbox with an offer for him to manage another bank that loved his services. And he worked for another 10 years after that. So the Rebbe says the time comes with a mission. If you have time in your life, you're meant to use it wisely. What's this to do with this week's Parsha? Glad you asked. And this week's Parsha, Bihar, on the mountain, many different laws. One of them is the laws of interest, forbidding a Jew to charge another Jew interest when you lend him or her money. Says the Rebbe, one of the underlying themes of this prohibition is that 
when you lend someone else money and try to make money off of that, what you're saying is something to the effect of, I don't need to accomplish now. I don't need to work now to accomplish things to change something in the world. What I did in the past was enough. Let my money work for itself. And that is not a Jewish concept, says the Rebbe. And finally, to round it up with a story that's related, and a lady came to the Alter Rebbe with a, a, a lung of an animal to see if it was kosher. And the Alter Rebbe checked it and spent hours reviewing the halacha, the loss, to see if it was kosher indeed. And the lady felt bad and said, Rebbe, it's just a lung. I can get another one. It's money, but it's just a lung. And uh, we could just let it go and throw it out. So the Alter Rebbe said, if you would know how this lung is begging to be utilized, to be eaten, to be eaten in a kosher way, with a blessing, and the energy from it will be used to do a good deed, to do a mitzvah. If you would just know that, then you wouldn't talk like that. Because everything in this world has its mission, including objects that want to be elevated, and including time that wants to be sanctified. What will you do with your next five minutes? God bless you. Have a good Shabbos. And we'll see you next time. Happy Lagba Omer this Sunday.